Okay, so if you're taking any sort of algebra course, something like a first year algebra class, algebra one, certainly algebra two, college algebra, those courses, you should be able to answer this question. And what we have here is an equation, and I'm only asking you how many solutions are there to this equation. And I was even generous enough to give you a clue. Okay, so I'm pointing at something here. But here's the deal, even if you get the answer right, what you need to do is justify, you know, why is your answer what it is, okay? And we're going to be talking about something that is absolutely critical. It's fundamental, and that's a little bit of another kind of uh, clue or insight what I'm going to be talking about. It's fundamental to algebra, okay? This is extremely, extremely important. So again, a pretty straightforward question, how many solutions does this equation have? Go ahead and put your answer into the comment section, but better yet, back up your answer with some sort of reason why uh, it is what it is. But uh, before we get into this, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in mathematics, but what you need is access to great math instruction. Hopefully you have an excellent math teacher. That's awesome. But you know, if you need additional instruction, uh, what you need, okay, whether you get it from your teacher or someplace else, is clear, understandable, and comprehensive math instruction. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I promise it will help you out big time. Also, if you happen to be preparing for any sort of test that has math on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, uh, GRE, GMAP, maybe a teacher certification exam. I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, check out my homeschool program for middle and high school mathematics. Won a lot of awards this year uh, with that. Very um, uh, happy with uh, my homeschool program. Been working with homeschoolers, by the way, for over 10 years. Um, so anyways, if you're a homeschooler, definitely check out my program. If you need a pair of math notes, I'm going to leave links to my notes in the description of this video. You can check those out if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's get into uh, what's going on here. So how many solutions does this equation have? Well, let's go ahead and tell you the answer right now. It has five solutions, five solutions. And notice I'm not telling you what the solutions are. Okay, I'm not even giving you any details on what type of solutions. I just said it has five solutions. So if you answered five, and here it's pretty straightforward. If you had to guess, right, I'm saying clue, I'm pointing to the five, and you're like, hey, maybe he's talking about the five here. Well, that's excellent, okay? So I gave you a clue, and if you ran with it, that's fantastic. But uh, so let me go ahead and give you a happy face if you did answer five. There's a happy face, there's an A plus, and here is a 100%. But I'm gonna hold off, um, giving you a A++ and a 1,000% uh, because I'm going to give you the full explanation to, uh, justification. That's really kind of the uh, meat and potatoes of this video. Okay, so five solutions. Why does it have five solutions? Well, let's go to talk about that now. So as I indicated, all right, I said that what we're going to be discussing is something that is fundamental to algebra. Matter of fact, it's called the fundamental theorem of algebra. This is huge, okay? Huge, huge, huge. So what is this? What am I talking about here? Well, let's go ahead and uh, discuss this right now. Okay, so what kind of equation do we have? Okay, you can see here that I already wrote the answer. We have a polynomial equation. So anytime you're dealing with polynomials, okay, things, I'm going to, uh, matter of fact, I'm going to define a polynomial because a lot of you, uh, hear this word, but you probably don't have the actual specific definition down. But anyways, anytime you're dealing with a polynomial equation, what you want to do is put that thing into standard form. That's the highest power to the lowest power. So let's go ahead and put the highest power here first. So our highest power is 9x to the fifth. Let's write that first. Okay, then we kind of look through. What else do we got? Oh, I have a uh, negative x cubed. So we'll put that next. So I'm going through here like, oh, I have an x squared. So I got to put that next. Remember, highest to lowest power, 5, 3, 2. And sometimes all the powers won't be representative. That's okay. So whatever you have, as long as you're putting it in descending order from highest to lowest power. Oh, I have a negative 5x. I'll put that there. And then I have my nice little number. I'll put that there equal to 0. So what you want to do is to always put your 
polynomial equations into standard form. Okay, by doing that, it's going to be uh, quite obvious that this is what we call the leading term. All right, this is the leading term of this polynomial equation. This is the leading coefficient. But here, notice I'm using the word degree, okay? The highest power of this leading term is 5. So we, refer, uh, we would refer to this as a fifth degree polynomial, okay, fifth degree polynomial. Now, how many of you could define in your own words what a polynomial is? So this is a polynomial. These are polynomial terms. What is a polynomial? If you can answer this, I would be actually pretty impressed. Put that into the uh, comment section. Uh, what is a polynomial? And feel free, again, to answer this in your own words. Let's go and talk about that real quick. So a polynomial, and I'm going to kind of use a uh, uh, you know, very basic verbiage here, is effectively uh, something like this. Well, we have a variable, okay, so let's say x. You can actually have more than uh, one variable. You can have like x, y, something like that. But we'll just stick with x. And then we have a number in front of the x, okay, or the number in front of an x, y. It doesn't make a difference. Now, this number, okay, that we, uh, we call a coefficient. So, for example, if we have 2x, this is a polynomial, okay, this number in front of the x is called a coefficient. So this number in front of the x can be any real number you want. It could be like 1.9, it could be a fraction, okay, no problem, pick any real number. It could be like the square root of 7x, okay, as long as it's a real number, that's perfectly fine, okay. But here is the key, all right, the power to our variables, okay, the power to our variables has to be uh, the whole numbers, i.e. 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Okay, uh, you can't have negative 1, you can't have uh, x to the 1 half power. So here, if I had x, let's say I had 7x uh, to the 5th, y to the 1 half, if I could write 1 half, okay, would this uh, right here constitute a polynomial? Well, the answer is no, okay? This part would, but not this part, not this thing whole together, not this entire thing together. It would not because this is not a whole number, okay? A uh, positive integer plus zero, okay? So uh, very, very important that you understand that. If you're dealing with uh, something like uh, 3x to the 1.7, uh, now we're talking about something we uh, entirely different. It's not a polynomial, all right? So the fundamental theorem of algebra only applies to polynomials. So when we look here, now you can see that all these terms of this polynomial, okay, these all these monomials connected together with plus and minus signs is one big polynomial. And the highest degree here is uh, five. So we would uh, refer to this as a fifth degree polynomial. So again, got to know these words, okay, because not everything in mathematics is a polynomial. And what I'm going to tell you here in terms of the fundamental theorem of algebra, let me erase all my stuff here, only applies to polynomials, okay? But polynomials are awesome in mathematics. We love polynomials, especially in more advanced math like calculus. They're easy to work with. Uh, we know, actually know quite a bit about polynomials. You study polynomials big time when you're in Algebra 1, Algebra 2, pre-calculus, and then we use them in calculus. We love, again, polynomials, so they're pretty uh, frequent. So anyways, or you're, they're pretty uh, frequently encountered in any course of study that I'm kind of mentioning, um, uh, mentioned here, right here. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, this thing that I'm trying to get to. So what I'm trying to tell you about is something called the fundamental theorem of algebra. And I kind of had to do all this pre-talking here to really get you um, to understand the importance of polynomials. Okay, so uh, in uh, basic uh, verbiage, the fundamental theorem of algebra states the following, okay? A polynomial, a polynomial will have its number of a number of solutions a polynomial equation will have will be equal to its degree. All right, that's more or less what the fundamental theorem of algebra states. So if you have a polynomial equation, all right, in this case we have a fifth degree polynomial equation, that's how many solutions the polynomial will have. Okay, that's effectively what the fundamental theorem of algebra states. So if you were asked to solve this equation, guess what? You need to give me five 
answers, okay? X1, X2, X3, you get the idea. X to the, X sub 4, these are uh, unique um, uh, solutions to this particular equation. All right, there's more to the story here. And what I'm kind of doing, uh, hopefully, is giving you uh, a little bit of an introduction of what you're going to be seeing in uh, uh, this more uh, uh, advanced mathematics. So if you're at the Algebra 1 level and you're like, okay, I just kind of wanted to see, you know, uh, what this video is about. Well, guess what? When you're in Algebra 2, you definitely need to know this in pre-calculus. You're going to be learning all this stuff. So, all right, so we have a fifth degree polynomial. That means it's going to have five solutions. So that's excellent. But what type of solutions? Well, we don't really know, okay? We can have real number solutions or complex uh, imaginary number solutions. We can have any kind of combination of the two. So we can have two real numbers, we can have three complex, but the sum total is going to be five, right? We could have all five real numbers, no complex numbers, okay? Uh, so uh, there's all sorts of little theorems and tools that we can use to determine the type of roots, okay? Uh, what type of roots do we have? Well, we, we're going to have this many real number uh, roots and then this many complex number roots. Now, I'm just kind of making stuff up because these numbers don't really kind of apply. I'm just kind of speaking loosely here that just because we know there's going to be five solutions, we don't know, oh, they're going to be all real or they're going to be all complex. We do have theorems and things that we learned that give us clues on what type of roots and what number of roots that we have. And uh, along with that, there's other additional tools that help us um, uh, solve these type of advanced polynomial equations. These are not easy problems to solve. So you have to know quite a bit of theorems and different kind of algebra skills and techniques to solve something like this. I'm not going to get into all of that right now. If you are at this level of mathematics, okay, I'm going to point you towards two of uh, two courses of mine. I would uh, point you towards algebra two and uh, certainly pre-calculus, probably uh, pre-calculus. Okay, but if you're at the algebra two level or college algebra level, you can check this out. But this is super important stuff. Okay, I wanted to just kind of set you up. Uh, with the basic understanding of, hey, when you're dealing with a polynomial, you need to be thinking of the fundamental theorem of algebra, right? You're like, okay, this is a fifth degree polynomial. So if I'm asked to solve this, I'm looking for five solutions, then I'm going to have to bring my polynomial toolbox to play. And there's a ton of things we know about polynomials that will help us solve this. But uh, anyways, hopefully you found this video interesting and helpful. And if that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.